This is Dr. Sace again, uh, continuing with this series of art therapy drawings uh, that I work through as a way to remember events from my early childhood when I was three or four years old. Uh, again, language skills weren't that well developed, but I had good visual memory. Um, a few days after the murder, of course, there was a funeral. The funeral took place at the Cathedral Church in Detroit. Uh, my mother led me in through the front of the church. The casket was already set up in the aisle. She took me up there and asked me to put my hand on the coffin so I could remember Michael. Um, I did that and she held my other hand. And in a minute or so, some other people came along and began to roll the casket to another location in front of one of the side pews on the right-hand side. And we followed the casket for a ways um, until there was a, a person sitting in the front row. At the end, they just kind of grimaced at us, gave us a, uh, a look like they didn't want us there. This is, you know, something very private with them, and I wasn't quite sure what to do, but my mother took my hand, and we walked back to uh, the left-hand side of the aisle, about halfway back in the church, uh, towards the back of the church, and we sat there with uh, some of her friends uh, that had also come. Uh, again, she was an art teacher um, before she retired, and she had a number of artist friends, and Michael was an artist. And while we were singing in the church, one odd thing I remember was a little girl sitting in front of me and pointing out to her mother that, oh, there's a little boy my age, and then uh, it's got one of those memories that stuck with me. But sitting with my mother, I, I watched my mother, she just looked so sad, and I asked her what was wrong, and she was holding back the tears, and wouldn't say anything, and I just understood that I should just sit there quietly and, and pay attention. After the funeral, we walked out of the front of the church and down south of the main doors of the cathedral, down to the next corner, where my mother and some of her friends uh, gathered and, and talked for a little while. Well, this was going on, and I was not terribly interested in their conversation. I was just looking across the street, it was uh, Woodward Avenue, which is Main Street in Detroit, um, over to um, what is West Boston Boulevard. A lot of trees, a meridian, uh, there's also some haze and fog because a lot of smoke and just, just the weather. Um, and my imagination just looked at the mist, I guess, and I, I imagine seeing Michael um, floating in the air and, and pointing t to follow him someplace. I was, wasn't scared, but it was just very, very odd. Then I saw or imagined in, the, in this uh, fog this uh, head, this head of this um, what I called Thule. Now, uh, this wasn't terribly odd because this was a brass uh, sculpture that I'd seen before. I'm not quite sure where it was. Uh, kind of an odd sculpture. And look at the, uh, the horns, they look like reverse uh, swastikas, more like Native American uh, shape of this. On top of a head that looks like it could be a fox or a wolf or, or really um, a tool elk. Uh, my wife found online a picture of a tool elk, and yeah, uh, the face looks like that, but um, for some reason I really liked this bronze sculpture, and for some reason associated it with Michael. Um, so, I, I guess I imagined that in front of me, and I thought I was thinking about that. and. Something compelled me to want to go over closer to see if I could see what I was thinking I was seeing closer and took a step off the curb and immediately fell into the street. Fortunately, it was the uh, parking lane and my mother still kind of had my hand and she pulled me back up to the sidewalk and you know, that was kind of the, 
the end of my uh, my visualizations for that day. Um, after that, uh, we walked back up towards our car, and that's where we continue in the next part, which is part four.